In this lecture video, I'm going to show us how to conduct normality tests in SPSS. In particular, you want to double check whether a given variable or data set follow normal distribution or not. Of course, you could see that sometimes when you carry out a research, maybe you fit in a regression model or you're running an ANOVA, you carry out a, a test, uh, maybe a factorial test or analysis of variance involving experimental design, those kind of experimental design. And you want to double check whether the variable of interest follow normal distribution or not. There are other aspects also apart from a, a linear regression model that of course you could also double check for normality. So how are you gonna do that? Of course, we could do it using the software SPSS. So in this case, we will use the two most reliable, consistent method that could be used to check for normality. The first is the Shapiro-Wilk test, while the second is the kolmogorov smenov test. Now, the statement of hypothesis is also important. What is the statement of hypothesis in this case? For the statement of hypothesis, sometimes it could be mistakenly used. Now, I mean one might interchangeably use them if you're not careful. So it's good to be extremely careful. Now, the null hypothesis is saying that the data set or the variable is normally distributed. So it follows normal distribution. While the alternative hypothesis is arguing against the null hypothesis. And in this case, the alternative hypothesis is saying that the data set or the variable do not follow normal distribution. So it's not normally distributed. So this is based on the evidence and in particular, the statistically significant evidence, whether the data set follow normal distribution or do not follow normal distribution. So we can only pass the judgment draw conclusion, make the decision, valid decision, and draw a conclusion based on the outcome of the analysis. So in this case, we'll go straight to what we intend to do now. We we'll go to the SPSS. So you could see my SPSS screen. I'm still using the variable height and the variable weight. So we could do it. Let's assume that we want to deal with the weight first to find out whether the variable weight follow normal distribution or not. So we go to analyze at the top icon. Like I said, the first thing you need to do whenever you have a data set in SPSS, it's advisable to move down to the bottom of your screen in this uh, uh, spreadsheet, the SPSS spreadsheet data editor. So of course you could see here, this is the data editor. Now, when you move down, you could see the variable view just to ensure that the data or the variables are correctly imputed into SPSS. So you could see that they've been correctly imputed. Now we could return and then proceed with the result, uh, analysis. So we go to analyze. From analyze, go to descriptive. From descriptive, you could go to explore. This is one of the options. So when you go to explore, which variable? You could even do more than one variable if you want, but we're happy with wait for now. So we'll go to wait. Now, for the statistics, we don't need to bother unless you want any of these. But if you don't want any of these, you could untick. If you don't need the descriptive statistics, you could leave that aside. And then, what you want is the plots. If you don't need stem and leaf plot on tick to show that you don't need that, what you need is normality plots with tests. If you need the normality plots with tests, then you could say continue. Okay. And then you could see the result. Now this is actually the result. This is the descriptive statistics for the weight where you could see the uh, mean, the variance, standard deviation, minimum and maximum value, the range, the interquartile range, skewness, and courtesies. That is for the descriptive statistics. 
But of course, our interest is this test. So in the first part here, we have the kolmogoro smirnov test. So we could see uh, the test statistic is 0.139, degree of freedom 83, the significant value less than 0 0.01. Then again, if we move to the Shapiro-Wilk, we could also see a uh, test statistic. We have the statistic value these, the degree of freedom. This is the test statistic as opposed to the critical value that could be obtained from the uh, statistical distribution table, uh, the normal table in particular. But of course, for small sample size, we use the student T distribution table at the respective degrees of freedom and at a certain significant level. So in this case, let's assume we're dealing with 5% significant level. So we also have here the significant value, which is p-value. SPSS report significant value instead of p-value, but the significant value is the p-value. So rather than p-value, SPSS reported as SIG, S-I-G. It means the p-value. And this p-value means the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true, which is, of course, the probability of accepting the null hypothesis when it is false, type one, type two error. So, right. So we could see here, now we can make our decision. We can make our decision based on the outcome of this investigation. So we have this value now. The p-value is by far less than 0 0.05 for the kolmogoros of test. For the shapiro wilk test, we also have p-value by far less than 0 0.05 because this is 0 0.006, so it's less than 0 0.05. So we can see evidence of statistical significance. Then what does it mean now? So you return back here. Remember, our interest is to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. But in this case, we could see here that it actually meet what we want. When you look at it properly from the result, we can see statistical significance. So it means that the null hypothesis will be accepted in this case. We accept, sorry, the alternative hypothesis rather. We will accept the alternative hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis. But if being that we have a p-value greater or equal to 0 0.05, then we can say that we can reject the null hypothesis instead and accept the null hypothesis. Then we can say that there is no evidence that the data set do not follow normal distribution, or for simplicity, the data set follow, uh, the data set do not follow normal distribution. That is in that aspect. But in this case, by the result we have, it provides a statistically significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Therefore, what should be our conclusion? We can now conclude that the data set do not follow normal distribution. Or in other words, we can say there is strong statistically significant evidence at 5% significant level that the data set follow normal distribution. In this case, it's also significant at 1% significant level. As you could see here, the p-value, which is SIG, is even less than 0.01. So it's also 1% significant for the Kolmogoros men of test. And for the Shapiro Wilk test, here it is, for the Shapiro Wilk test, it is also 5% uh, significant. And at the same time, it is 1% significant because we have 0 0.006, not 0 0.06, it's 0 0.006. So, that is our conclusion. Again, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis and therefore conclude that the data set 
is not normally distributed or the variable weight is not normally distributed at 5% significant level or there is a statistically significant evidence at 5% significant level that the variable weight do not follow normal distribution or is not normally distributed. All right, so we are done with for the weight. Let's also go down before we move to the height also. Let's see the evidence. Now, the reason why we have this, you could see these dots, they go up and then they come down. They go up and come down. So what we normally check is to see if these dots are far away from the straight line or not. The dots are meant to go up and down, up and down, but they should never go far away. If the dots go far away, then it's not normally distributed. But if the dots are very close, they didn't go far at all, then it will give an evidence that it is normally distributed. So we can see from the result we obtain here. All right. If we move down, you can also see all this. In this case, we have the observed value and also the uh, division from the normal. Then you could see this also taking the form of a V shape. And then you could see the dots coming down again. So these are additional evidence. Then this is box plot. The box plot is just indicating outlier. As you could see here, there is an outlier. The case of outlier has to do with unusual values. When there is an unusual value or unusual measurement, from a set of values, then of course you will have an outlier. For instance, you're dealing with age and age of students in a class. Then you're having a student uh, from among the range, maybe the range you have ranging from 20 to 30. Then you're now having 300. There's no way you can have a student who is aged 300 years. So that is an unusual value. So when there are unusual values, it will result to outlier in that case. And of course, in the box plot, it will indicate an outlier. When you see this dot somewhere here, it's an outlier. Where there is no dot, no outlier. All right. So the unusual value could be smaller or larger, but usually larger values. We want to go to the next part. Let's take this off and also test for the uh, height. So we go to analyze descriptive statistics, then explore. And instead of weight, we take a height in this case and ensure that normality plots with tests should be there because we need that. And then if we need both statistics and plot, of course, you'll have this. If it is just the statistics, we don't need the plot. But if you need both statistics and plot, then of course you could take this box. And that's what we need. So you could also see for this, the case of the height, by the result we obtain. Now this is the case processing summary. We have 83 observations. Could see also the percent, no missing value, that's fine. These are descriptive statistics. If you need some kind of descriptive statistics about the data, then our area of interest is the normality test. So we have the Kolmogoro Smenov test and the Shapiro Wilk test. By the evidence you can see here, you could see very clearly here that for the case of the height, the Kolmogoro Smenov test gives a p value. It gives a, a p value of 0 0.200, which is by far greater than 0 0.05. And if you move to the Shapiro Wilk test, it also gives a p value greater than 0 0.05. So in this case, there is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis against the 
alternative or to reject the null in favor of the alternative hypothesis in this case. So we could look at it properly. Now, if we go back to our hypothesis, we say that the issue is the data set or the variable height is normally distributed or it follows normal distribution. Why the alternative hypothesis is saying that the data set or the variable height is not normally distributed. But by the evidence we have, there is no, there is no justification to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So we can conclude based on this analysis or this result that the data set do not provide any evidence that the data that is not normally distributed. Or we we'll put it that from our analysis or from the output or our result, there is no evidence that the data set is not normally distributed at 5% significant level. So in other words, we are saying that the data set follow normal distribution. So we can see that the height follow normal distribution, while the weight do not follow normal distribution. So it's very clear. So if you say that there is no evidence that the data set or the variable do not follow normal distribution, you are all you are you are saying that the data set follow normal distribution, which is the null hypothesis. So in this case, there is no statistically significant evidence at 5% significant level to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. And by conclusion, or let's say by decision, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Do not reject issue. That's what we have. Do not reject issue. That is the null hypothesis. And our conclusion will be that there is uh, evidence, or in other words, we can say that there is no evidence that the data set do not follow normal distribution, which implies that the data set follow normal distribution based on the 5% significant level. And you can also see, in this case, you could see the dots very close, leaning on this straight line, not far away from the straight line at all. So this gives a backup evidence. If you see the dot going far away from it, like in the case of the weight, it do not follow, does not follow normal distribution. But in the case of the height, you could see the dots are going up and down, up and down, going up and down. They are accelerating, they go up, then decelerate, come down a bit, then go up again. They are falling and rising and falling and rising a lot of which are leaning on the straight line. So this is called the QQ plot for the height. The QQ plot, the quantile to quantile plot is also another evidence. This is a detrended, a detrended normal QQ plot that is showing a graphical evidence regarding the uh, uh, normality a status, whether it is normally distributed or not normally distributed. And of course, you could also see this evidence is different from the previous. The previous case, you have a V-shape, but in this case, you could see the way comes up, go down, and then come down again at some point, go up again. So this is, that is from deviation from normal. You could also see the second detrended normal QQ plot for the height is also an indication that the data set follow normal distribution. And of course, in the case of outlier, you could see that there is no outlier at all. Remember for the case of box plot, this line that cuts the box into two indicates the median. And in this case, the median is 170. This is the median. It cuts it into two. There are situations where it could be symmetrical. That is, the two sides will be equal. But where it is unequal, it is not symmetrical. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video regarding normality tests. It's very important. 
to double check a given data set, especially when you're running integration model or factor analysis, like experimental design, where you want to also uh, fit uh, a model involving factors, factor A, factor B, uh, whether it is a randomized block design or a completely randomized design and so on. Of course, you need to also double check for normality to ensure that the normality assumptions are met. So here ends the lecture video for normality test. Thank you once again for watching this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can as well drop a comment. You could leave a comment after watching the video, especially if you are happy with the video. And again, you can as well like it. And the more you do so, of course, the more you will encourage me to share more information. Thank you so much. Bye.